The subject is forms of address and public figures in the United States. In the court case, the lawyers for Trump probably at his insistence or their own trepidation call him President Trump. He refers to President Trump. I wonder if the judge has the power and the authority to order that he be called Mr. Trump because it could unduly influence the jurors. He is not the president. He is not President Trump. He is Mr. Trump. President Trump would have been an honorific of a retired politician because usually after the presidency, one leaves office. And therefore, you could have said, Mr. Obama, may I ask? You could have said, President Obama, may I ask you a question? Mr. Obama, may I ask you a question? Personally, I prefer Mr. Obama. We live in a democracy, not a monarchy, even though there's always this tendency to try to add a magisterial tone to the presidency. And, and that's a constitutional problem, that the powers of the political leader are vested in the same office as the chief of state, and therefore the president of the United States um, has two jobs, and he can take advantage of one job towards another. So that Bush, who was in a miserable unpopularity, uh, after the 9-11 attack, he received overwhelming national support. And he used that politically as the prime minister, he used that to prosecute two wars, uh, one of which certainly was a war crime and for which he should be hanged. And instead he is endearing to many people. Uh, you may remember Michelle Obama leaning her head against the war criminal's shoulders. That ain't good. Likewise, you may notice the blunder by uh, President Biden when he threw his arms around Netanyahu and gave him a big affectionate hug after the October 7th attacks. Bibi Netanyahu was the prime minister. There was no reason to hug him. The person you want to hug is the president of the country. You don't, you wouldn't want to hug Netanyahu, who is simply the prime minister and does not receive condolences on behalf of the nation. That was lost on Biden for some reason. I consider it a terrible gaffe. People talk about his other gaffe, slips of the tongue. This was a terrible mistake. Likewise, reporters are referring to President Trump. No, it's not President Trump, and you don't have to call him former President Trump. Just say Donald Trump, Mr. Trump. As soon as a president ceases to be the president, he must revert to Mr. as a form of address. Because before this, it would have been President Carter, President Bush, President Clinton. You could address them as such because they were safe. They had left office and they, they, they recognized respectfully the shift and the handover of power. But as soon as Dick Cheney started criticizing President Obama, I would stop calling him Mr. Vice President or Vice President Cheney and just go to Mr. Cheney, because if he's gonna to continue to engage in, 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 political, in a political role and use his, his prestige as a former Vice President to criticize the President, then his office is Mr. Cheney. He doesn't have an office. Well, in the case of Trump, who tried to uh, take over the government and is a uh, horrible, stinking, evil mass of personal interest, there's no reason to address him as President Trump. It's Mr. Trump. He has no right to demand anything because he has no legal right to be called that. It was an honorific, out of respect, at a time when these people, uh, when these people kept their noses out of public business. So let's adopt the form now that as soon as someone leaves office, he becomes or she becomes Mr. Trump, Mr. Obama, Mr. Clinton.
Ms. Clinton, Ms. Trump, Mr. Ms. Harris. Right now it's Vice President Harris. Can we agree on this?